All right, guys, let's get down to work here. We're going to be tattooing the fake skin like we talked about in the last video. Now, first off, we need to set up our machine. And like I told you guys a few videos ago that we were going to be using the CNC Q2 as much as possible moving forward in the videos. So today we're going to be using that same CNC Q2. That being said, I'm going to wrap this machine up. We're going to get it ready to go. As always, gloves. All right, guys, now that our tattoo machine is all set up, it's time to set up our ink, get our needles ready, and get this show on the road. So as usual, I start with a little bit of A&D on the bottom of my caps. I don't know that I'll even need two caps. I should probably only need one. I'm just using black. We're gonna be using dynamic ink for this. It's important to make sure you shake the bottle well. Again, be careful with this stuff. It pours very quickly. So for right now, these are the two needles that I'm pretty sure I'll be using. But oftentimes, as I'm tattooing, I will find that, you know what, I need a different needle that I didn't think I was going to need. You know, maybe that five, maybe that seven, maybe that really fat liner. I would hope you already know that going into it. But there are things that you're going to have to change on the fly. So be ready for that. Now I'm going to go with 8.4 volts like you see here. This is subject to change and vary as I go. That's how much I have the needles thrown out and that's gonna be my starting point. Now again, this could go up into the tube. I could bring it out of the tube. I'm gonna have to play with it as I go to find what I wanna do. And now that we have that all set up, ready to rock, about the place we want it, I'm gonna take a little bit of A and D and I'm gonna put it on the back side of my glove. It just makes it a little easier as you're working to grab a little, wipe it on there, do your job, grab a little, and go. So again, the key in tattooing, fake skin, have a point where you wanna start and a point where you wanna end. Know where you're going so you have that focusing moment where you're focused all the way through the line, all the way through the line, all the way through the line, and you're pulling out. Add a little extra ink, make sure you're ready. Just dip the tips into the ink, all right? Don't drop the whole tube in there, just the tip, especially when lining, keep it clean, it's already hard enough. So let's get into it. Okay, we could wipe that see how everything looks, but I'm gonna run a few lines first. Usually when tattooing real skin, I'll run a couple lines, I'll wipe, make sure things are looking good, ensure that my needle depth is okay, my voltage is good, so I want to do the same thing on fake skin. I ran a couple lines. I want to take a look at them, see what I need to change. This is my moment here in the beginning to find where the flaws are at and try to fix them. So I can live with that. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe I'm moving maybe a little bit too fast. It's hard to say. But for the most part, I'm okay with these lines right now. So let's keep going. I had a lot of questions asking, when should I re-dip my needles into the ink? When do I know if I'm out of ink? It helps if you have somewhat of a transparent uh, cartridge or tube so you can kind of see that there's less ink sitting in there. But when in doubt, just dip the tip.
So when you can't get the ink off, I usually just add A and D right on top of it, or Vaseline. All right, so I have the thicker lines already laid in for the bottom half here. So what I wanna do next is I wanna switch needles. I'm gonna to go to a smaller needle, probably gonna to go to a five, knock out the skull for the most part, maybe get the little details with the three. Again, guys, it's one line, one line at a time. Don't think about the whole tattoo. Think about that one line, where you're starting and where you're going. Mistakes are going to happen. Even if you're perfect, mistakes are going to happen. I can already see mistakes in this, but that's because I see everything that I do wrong. I'm still running 8.4 volts, but when I switch to this smaller needle grouping, I move my hand a little bit faster because it's able to puncture the skin, or fake skin, a little bit easier. Now it is time for me to switch over to a bug pin, a three round liner with a long taper and knock out these really, really small details. So let's do that. So now I'm gonna switch to the five, take care of anything that I think should be like a five line way, and then I'll drop down to a three, touch up in anything that needs a little three in, and uh, we'll wipe it down and see what we got. I will say this is a bit different from real skin, like actual human skin, but uh, it's still a really great practice tool. Just keep in mind that when you're going from this to real skin, 
you're gonna have to make some adjustments but you'll get a feel for it you'll understand what your fake skin um voltage speed all that stuff is and then you'll also have a separate one for doing real skin clients and tattoos so let's switch over to the five All right, guys, now we are gonna drop down to our three and finish everything up with that. All right, so here's the final product. Normally, I would spend about another 10, 15 minutes working on this just buttoning it up, fixing any of those little lines that are a little too light or what have you. Sometimes you have a line here and a line here and a line going across and they're not exactly touching. That's what that good wipe down is for. And then finding those, going back and doing those. That's what needs to happen next on this piece. I'll take care of that. And then after that, we're going to be shading this as well. I'm not sure when, maybe in a week or two, but we're also going to shade it so that way you guys can see how to shade the fake skin. Another thing I noticed here is that, like some people commented in the last video, about how difficult it's gonna be to get this purple stencil that's behind my lining off. And when you know it, you guys are absolutely correct. It, it's a pain in the butt. There was a, a few suggestions in the last video, I think bleach, a um, couple other things, but I figured I'd wait till this video and ask you guys that question. How do you get that purple stencil off after letting it dry for too long. As an end result, up close I can see it, but far away it looks too purpley. Now it's still great practice, fantastic practice. Just understand again that you have to change what you're doing from fake skin to real skin. Real skin reacts a little bit differently. I see several flaws here, some lines that I rushed and I could tell I rushed them and that's why it's nice to go back to practice skin so you can see what tendencies you may or may not have and it seems like towards the end of the tattoo for me maybe I speed up a little bit much maybe I don't slow down maybe I'm not being consistent all the way through while great to help you guys it really helped me too so if you liked this video if you enjoyed it if you learned something then go ahead and hit the like button guys again that really does support the channel it helps the message get out to more people and, I, and we really appreciate that let's share the information with everybody if you know something let us know share your story share your situation and if you're a new subscriber i'm going to welcome you here i appreciate you i'm glad you're here you found the channel for a reason and i hope i don't let you down and if you haven't consider subscribing new videos every week and until next time guys peace